When is a wedding not just a wedding? When it brings a family unit together. Whether you chose to have a child or children before you got married, adopted, were blessed via surrogacy, undertook IVF, or were gifted, some ready-made children when you agreed to marry your fiancé, the end result is the same. You have way more to think about than just wedding planning in everyday life. You're a parent now. It's the most thrilling ride that you'll ever go on that no one ever prepared you for. The highs are so incredible that they make you giddy like your heart might explode. And the lows, when you're worrying about this little human or functioning zombie style through lack of sleep, it makes you wonder what you did with all that time you used to have. And I get it. My husband and I got married when our daughter Audrey was just one and a half years old. It's a whole new challenge in and of itself to plan a wedding with Littlies in tow. But the fact remains, your life feels brighter, funnier, and is filled with pride and wonder. And they absolutely must be included in your wedding somehow. You just haven't worked out how just yet. Today, you're going to learn 10 practical and sweet but different ways to include your child or children in your wedding ceremony, no matter their age, propensity for parkouring off walls at a moment's notice, or agreeableness on an average day. So let's get stuck into it. Unbridly is a community of pro-wedding vendors who believe in freedom and integrity in weddings, giving you options, solutions, tips and tricks to create the experience and memories that you and your fiancé really want and deserve. Because we believe that weddings are a team sport. With how-tos, stories and interviews with recently married couples, we find out what went right and what they'd change if they could go back and do it all over again. I'm Camille and welcome to the Unbridly podcast. Let's start at the very beginning. Because I feel you're a pretty down-to-earth parent, so I know what I'm going to tell you next won't come as too much of a shock. The key to including your child or children in your wedding ceremony is, drumroll please, low expectations. I'd love to share with you one of the now funny, at the time alarming stories that sticks in my memory. It was from a ceremony I conducted for a couple around 10 years ago. So Glen Newen Estate is a beautiful wedding venue. It's green, it's lush. There are sort of beautiful gardens, a beautiful Tuscan-style house. There's a pond out the back of where the ceremony is, a little stream that trickles down one side. And on this particular afternoon, myself, the groom, his groomsman, all the guests are there assembled, ready to start this ceremony. And I knew we were going to have this gorgeous little flower girl who was going to be kicking off the processional or, you know, the walking down the aisle bit. So we're up the front. The music starts. And the little girl just looked angelic, like positively glowing in the afternoon sun. Her little golden locks were shining and she was walking down the aisle towards us. It's quite a walk at Glen Ewan Estate. And she got about halfway. She kept her head down for pretty much the first half of the walk. But for some reason, maybe because 120 sets of eyes were on her, she looked up, clocked everyone's attention, screamed, no! at the top of her lungs and sprinted right towards the creek. She dropped a little (laughs) little basket of flowers and, yes, several adults uh, were also quite panicked and rushed to go and get her before she jumped into the creek. And this is the thing. You can't really predict. We can anticipate a lot, but you can't really predict what they're going to do in that moment when the pressure's on. I mean, hell, we don't even know what we're doing and we're the adults. So a really good rule of thumb is that kids five and under, it really depends on which way the wind is blowing on the day. I would highly recommend that you limit their actual input. Maybe don't give them too much responsibility. Definitely don't get them to speak or respond to any vows, like put them under that pressure situation. It's just not a wise choice. But then when kids are going to school, five, six years of age, through going to school alone, they're more able to take direction, understand what the wedding means, and also help younger children. Nothing makes a four-year-old sit up and take notice 
like a 10-year-old. They can be given uh, more responsibilities, I find, and they respond really well to them and often step up to the occasion. There's lots of ways that you can help your kid to be in the best frame of mind for your wedding ceremony and your entire wedding day. And I detail these ways in some unbridly blog posts, so you can go and have a read of those. One of them is how to plan a kid-friendly wedding, and the other one is how to include kids in your wedding. Both have some really great tips about what they should wear, who should look after them, uh, where they should sit, how to entertain them. And so I'll put the link for those blog posts in the show notes for you to check out as well. But for now, let's get into some practical ways that your child or children can be involved in your wedding ceremony. And I've broken this down into before the ceremony activities, if you like, during the ceremony itself and post ceremony. The number one way to include your child in your wedding ceremony is to make them feel a part of it by getting ready together. There is nothing more exciting to a child than being able to get all dressed up, to have some special food, to have some time with you to really process what's going on as well and enjoy the excitement. Whether you're getting ready at home or at another venue will all depend, and the age of your child will all depend on how much they can be involved practically. But just spending that time with them and making sure that they've got your love and attention on such an important day when their emotions will be on high as well. It's really good to keep that in mind. The second way is a first look with your fiance or yourself. So I think it's a beautiful surprise if you've arranged a first look with your fiance. So prior to your ceremony, yourself and your photographer are going to a location to basically reveal your outfit to your fiance. And take those beautiful photos, have those first moments together where you can say, holy hell, we're getting married today. It can be a gorgeous surprise to have your child or children there. So when your fiancé turns around expecting to see you, they see the kids and can take in, I guess, how grateful they are to be a family and to see them all dressed up. It's a gorgeous way to incorporate the kids and then have those moments captured as well by your pro photographer. Number three is giving your kid or kids responsibilities just at the start of the ceremony. So at your ceremony location in handing things out. A lot of the time we're needing to give things to guests as they arrive. They might be programs, order of ceremony booklets, It might be rose petals or bubbles to shower the newlyweds with at the end of the ceremony. It might be bottle of water, sunscreen, handheld fans. You know, however you're making your guests feel super comfortable and welcome at your ceremony, having your child hand those out really fills them with a sense of pride that they've helped. Number four is escorting your guests to their seats. Often we have immediate family, for example who will want to be near the front of your ceremony, whether they're seated or not. And, you know, it depends on the formality of your ceremony, where you're having it held, of course. But if you've got a child who might be six, seven or older, and they're comfortable with the immediate family members, then it's beautiful to have them greet them at the door and show them where their seats are. Again, it's a sense of contributing And the kids will feel super important as they're able to help your guests to their seats. Number five is in arriving to the ceremony. A ceremony starts when someone arrives. So there might be an opportunity to have them escort you down the aisle, being towed in a wagon if they're really tiny, maybe being carried by a wedding party member. And obviously this works best for babies who can't walk. But then as we're talking about older kids, it might be carrying rose petals or a basket and able to scatter those as they walk down the aisle, carrying a small bouquet of their own or carrying a flower or ribbon wand, which is really sweet, holding a sign. Um, One of my faves is if uh, one of the kids is walking down holding a sign that says last chance to run to whoever the fiancé is down the end of the aisle, walking the family pet. So if you've got a dog that, you know, might be a a little compliant one or a big dopey one, if your kid 
and your dog have a great relationship and, you know, the child is able to control it, obviously. We don't want anything, you know, going crazy or awry. But if they're able to walk them down the aisle, it's another member of the family who gets to be involved in a really sweet way. Or carrying your wedding rings in a box, on a pillow, or as ring security can be really fun. Tiny little suitcase, all done up to look like a top secret briefcase, maybe some dark sunnies, maybe a little black suit, whatever's appropriate. So some of these ways are super fun, some are a bit more formal, and some require more responsibility. So be sure to work out well ahead of time. Have an on-site rehearsal or a run-through if you can, and discuss with your child or children where they are to go or sit once they've made it down the end of the aisle. Super important. Walking down is one thing. What to do at the end is another altogether. And I've been a part of way too many ceremonies where all the focus has gone on arriving, walking down, and then these children just wander around aimlessly like they're at a crèche, going in and out of people's legs and all sorts of stuff, which is super cute. But they can also become a bit of a distraction for the ceremony when you really want the focus to be on yourself and your fiancé. If you had a sweary, chocolate-addicted, wine-sipping fairy godmother who could help you with your wedding planning, what would you wish for? Perhaps no more waking up in the middle of the night in a cold sweat, wondering what you've forgotten, or fretting about your RSVPs, Maybe no more spreadsheets or post-it notes or endless to-do lists. Well, I can help you with all of that. Websites is an Australian wedding website builder, guest management software and wedding project planner all in one. Why is this such a game changer for you? Well, imagine everything to do with your wedding being in one place, updated in real time in the cloud, shareable to anyone else that's helping you, password protected for your guests with notifications to tell you what needs to be done next and by when. It's amazing, right? I love how easy websites is to set up and use and how there are no ads on the platform yelling at you to spend more money on your wedding. To get started on your very own free wedding website, just head to websites.com. That's W-E-D-S-I-T-E-S dot com and enter the code unbridly pod that's unbridly pod to get 10 percent off their paid planning tools the link is in the show notes babies will usually be held or placed in a pusher or a bassinet or you know in a carrier and they're pretty happy that way when toddlers get down the end of the aisle they love having a dedicated picnic blanket just for them to one side of the ceremony space awaiting them, especially if it's outdoors. You can have some quiet toys on there and some non-staining snacks as well. It's one thing to dress them up all nice, get them down the aisle and you're like, oh, this is beautiful. And then you sit them down and give them red lollies. Well, the red lollies will be everywhere, I can assure you. So non-staining snacks are your friend. School-age kids, they like to feel like big kids. They like to feel like they're being taken seriously. And they might appreciate a designated chair of their very own at the front. So when they make it down the aisle, they sit down, they've done their part, and they can feel very confident and proud of themselves. And others, you may want to have standing with your wedding party at the front of the ceremony for the duration. Please keep in mind that kids rarely stand still. And the younger they are, the more likely that they'll be a distraction for you and your guests. Okay, so then the next way that your kids can be included in your ceremony is during the ceremony itself. Number six is acknowledging them during your ceremony. And this is gold because there is no input from them needed at all. You can have them written into your wedding ceremony, perhaps in the welcome and introduction at the very start of your ceremony, in a part of the ceremony about your story, your history together, or the announcement as a family at the end. Having their names mentioned several times during the ceremony makes them feel truly a part of it and super special. And another way is to read family promises or vows to them before your vows. You could make some special promises to 
perhaps go on a family adventure with them if there's somewhere in particular you'd really like to go. Or maybe more general, to always believe in their dreams, to always cheer for them the loudest, and to always embarrass them with your dancing. Number seven is having them talk during the ceremony, like actually participate. So this particular level and degree of involvement should be approached with due consideration of the capability of your child, their age, and how supportive they are of you and your future spouse. Out of the mouth of babes is a popular saying for a reason. So please approach with caution. There's a few different ways that your child can participate in the ceremony itself. So you could ask them to do a reading or a poem. You could ask them to say, I do, to some family promises. Or you could ask them to pronounce you as married at the end of the ceremony. And this is just dead set, heart burstingly beautiful. So to have a little child go the newly married couple or Mr. and Mrs. or finally married at the end and having everyone cheer is just freaking adorable. Number eight, participating in your ceremony itself. Of course, during the ceremony, it's quite common for couples to exchange wedding rings. And so the thinking around this, giving your child a meaningful gift of their very own, is that you get promises and a present, they get promises and a present. So their own ring, a necklace, a watch or another special token. For younger kids, it just might be something like a plushie or a squishy, and they'll be thrilled to bits and it's something that they'll remember forever too. Or you could ask your child or children to sign a family wedding certificate. The legal certificate, of course, is off limits because they're not of age, but a commemorative family wedding certificate could be a beautiful touch. Alternatively, you can include them in a ritual, a family coming together ritual, such as a hand fasting or a sand ceremony. Time capsule ceremony is beautiful and they could all contribute, you know, something small to the family time capsule, which could be opened in, say, five years time. I've also got a blog post on Unbridely, which is called The Six Blended Family Unity Rituals for Your Wedding Ceremony that haven't been done to death. So there's some really good alternatives in there as well. I think I like the lolly blending ritual the best. And the next stage is after the end of the ceremony. So there are usually several things that need to happen at the conclusion of a wedding ceremony. And depending on the age of your child or children, it might be another opportunity to include them. So idea number nine is as chief photographer. And I would recommend that your child be like eight-ish or older. You could give your child a disposable camera and a list of things to capture and make sure that your celebrant or officiant announces their role to your guests as well. Their perspective will be absolutely priceless. Or idea number 10 is as photo captain. And I would recommend that your child be uh, around 10-ish or older. So most professional wedding photographers, they require a shot list for family and group photos after your ceremony. And if your kid, like mine, (laughs) likes to be the one in charge, then give them the list and have them help to round everyone up for each photo combination of your families. Again, feeling very important, feeling included and seriously contributing. So I hope some of these ideas have sparked some inspiration for you in how you can include your own children in your wedding ceremony. To recap, idea number one is getting ready together. Number two is a first look with your fiancé. Number three is handing things out at the ceremony, so rose petals, um, bottles of water, sunscreen, handheld fans, those sorts of things. Number four is escorting your guests to their seats. Number five is arriving to the ceremony, so taking part in the processional in any one of about a dozen ways, from being towed down the aisle in a wagon to walking the family pet or being ring security. Number six is acknowledging them during the ceremony, having their name mentioned during the welcome and introduction or in a family section of the ceremony, or reading some family promises or vows to them before your vows. Number seven is having them talk during the ceremony, maybe a reading or poem saying I do to some family promises or pronouncing you as married. 
Number eight is participating in your ceremony, maybe a gift like a ring, necklace or watch, asking them to sign a family wedding certificate or being a part in another ritual like a sand ritual or time capsule ceremony. There are lots of different rituals which are perfect for families. So have a look at the links in the show notes for the Unbridly blog posts on that one. Number nine is as chief photographer, obviously not as your professional photographer, but their perspective is different. It's lower to the ground, let's face it. And it would be sweet and cheeky to see their interpretation of the photos that you want them to capture on a disposable camera. And number 10 is as photo captain, rounding up all those combinations of your family and friends and getting you to cocktail hour quicker. I hope you love these ideas. If you've got any others that you'd like to share with the Unbridly podcast community, I'd love for you to let me know. You can DM me at any time at Unbridly on Instagram or email me hello at unbridly.com. Bye for now. That about wraps it up for this episode of the Unbridly podcast. For the links and resources we mentioned, please head to the show notes. And if you love the show, please review and subscribe on the podcast platform you're on now so you don't miss out on a single episode. Thanks so much for listening. And remember, weddings are a team sport. Catch you soon.